Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 15th. This first one was sent in by my friend Jose Angel from El Salvador. And it's from the dailymail.co.uk. As usual, all the links to all the stories I talk about will be down in the description below. So safe you can ride it without a helmet, BMW reveals self-balancing bike concept that is so safe you will never fall off. Well, I will admit, I'll show you a picture here, it is a very futuristic design and everything like that, but um, telling people that uh, you don't need to use any kind of safety gear, especially something like a helmet, like it's going to put up some kind of invisible shield, don't quite think so, but I'll tell you a little bit about it, the article from uh, how they, they tell it. The caption underneath is the self-balancing BMW Motor Red Vision next 100 concept motorcycle is unveiled on the last of four international stops of the iconic Impulses event celebrating 100 years of BMW. So I'm guessing it's a specialty bike for 100 years of BMW, and I don't really see this as one of those things coming to market. I see more or less as just a, a test bed or something like that. The Zero Emissions bike has self-balancing wheels designed to stand upright even at a complete stop. Stability, the company says, will allow riders to forego riding at to forgo, well, it says forego riding a helmet. They did the caption wrong. Forego riding with a helmet, I guess it's supposed to be. So, um, any late reaction in the driver will, that the driver will trigger the vehicle and it will balance itself out. You know, still, I mean, unless it can just basically put a shield around the driver, there are things that can happen or things that can go wrong or suppose even the uh, balancing system itself malfunctions. Anything electronic can malfunction. So I wouldn't give it quite that kind of credit, but, you know, hey, kudos to them for actually designing it this way. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a neat motorcycle to look at, like a kind of similar to a piece of sculpture or something like that. I'm um, not sure how comfortable it would actually be to ride on, but, hey, you know, Give them credit where credit's due. I mean, I think eventually it will be coming to where as uh, riders get older and the population ages and stuff like that, there will be more and more desire for a self-balancing motorcycle, especially for people that don't want to switch to training wheels or a trike or something like that. This next one comes from Gizmodo. Everyone is too busy watching Netflix to pirate content. I said this many, many, many times. People are going crazy over, oh, what about torrenting and, uh, you know, people uh, illegally sharing uh, movies and, and TV shows and stuff like that. And it's going to be the death of the movie industry and the death of the TV industry. Yeah, you know, like I said, they said the same thing about when people were copying piano rolls. It was going to be the death of uh, live piano playing. Total nonsense. And as of the latest survey now, looks like instead of, uh, used to be that BitTorrent was about a third of the traffic on the internet in the average night. Well, guess what? 34.7% of the aggregate traffic at night is from Netflix, and people pay for Netflix, followed by YouTube, which people indirectly or directly pay for. You can get YouTube Red or you can indirectly pay for it because it's supported with ads and giving your information up besides that, too. So you pay for YouTube indirectly in many ways, followed by HTTP at 6% and BitTorrent at 4.35%. So BitTorrent traffic has fallen to less than 5% percent of traffic and that's even assuming if you want to really uh, assume that most bit tra uh, BitTorrent traffic is uh, illegal uh, sharing and, and pirating um, it's very possible because BitTorrent can be used for legal items too like sharing um, Ubuntu and uh, Linux and stuff like that that not all of BitTorrent traffic is necessarily um, illegal traffic and then right after BitTorrent, at 2.94% is Amazon Video. Um, I'm an Amazon Prime member, too, and I'll have to say they still don't quite uh, stand up to Netflix standards. Although, I'll have to say, honestly, too, Netflix is not doing good, too. It's uh, I've seen lately in ads that Netflix is dropping more and more of their uh, really uh, good content so they can put more money instead of licensing fees for some of the good content to make their own um, original content. So... Um, one of the reasons why I dropped Netflix was a lot of the old classic TV shows or some of the really classic movies and stuff like that. They just weren't renewing them. They were dropping the content. So the more and more they drop content like that, when I can't watch something, if I'm paying, you know, even if I'm paying a measly, you know, eight to ten bucks a month, I still would like to be able to see what I want to see. So I finally just dropped Netflix myself. And next from Science Alert, this is another one about Mars. Boeing says it will beat SpaceX to Mars. Like I told you before when I was talking about Mars last week, I think a lot of these things um, from Elon Musk and other people like that are just more or less to keep the vision alive, whether, whether they actually will go to Mars. Uh, I think it's more likely that um, maybe the United States, some other countries, and SpaceX and Boeing will probably all have a hand in on it. But 
Um, it's great to keep the vision alive. And I even noticed on uh, uh, public uh, radio, they uh, uh, played a recent Obama speech to where he talks about that he's a science geek and he still wants to see the mission to Mars come about. So um, whoever ends up getting in office as the next president, I'm hoping at least, um, whether anybody likes them or not, I'm at least hoping that they will support a budget for NASA and even a greater budget because um, right now we're okay for where we're at right now, but we're going to have to step it up quite a lot if we want to actually be serious about making a trip to Mars before. I think the, right now the goal is before 2030. So if you get a chance, check out sciencealert.com. And last off, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Dave Fudmotten for helping to keep uh, the Facebook, uh, the Dumpster Divers page on Facebook alive too and uh, posting and uh, really uh, adding a lot of content and stuff like that. So I'm going to share one of the uh, many posts that he's put on there too and there, I'm also going to give a shout out at the end to another Dave and use some of his too because it's the two Daves uh, Dave Fudmotten and Dave Nicholson that have both really worked hard to keep the page live and keep it going keep content posted and stuff like that if uh, when I looked at it over the last week or even a little bit longer uh, pretty much all the content was from both of them so I'm going to feature David Fudmotten this week and next week I'm going to feature an article posted on the Facebook page from Dave Nicholson so this one is from the Sunday Express. Brian Cox shot claim we haven't met aliens because they're dead and humans are next. Um, I kind of like these stories too, where people kind of take a guess as to well why you know why haven't aliens landed on Earth now? Why haven't we had any contact with it? So uh, uh, this is kind of Brian Cox's take on it himself. So Mr. Cox elaborated on a theory claiming that it is the reason why we've not seen any strong evidence of extraterrestrials is you reach a certain point where your uh, scientific and your engineering outstrips your ability to uh, be able to uh, politically keep uh, keep yourself from destroying yourself basically um, it's, it says in his exact quote it may be that the growth of science and engineering inevitably outstrips the development of political expertise leading to disaster and then it goes on to say that another um, scientific theory too is that scientists believe that it just takes so long to develop complex life over such a long period that we may just be the very first one or among the first group of people that have actually been, you know, space-faring individuals, if you call that, or a technological society. I also think the very possibility, too, is advanced civilizations, especially when they get computer and virtual reality power, get to the point to where they prefer virtual reality, kind of the matrix scenario where people actually prefer virtual reality over the regular life. So they just basically internalize and either just, I don't know, uh, don't have any desire to communicate or go outside for any reason, maybe living in little pods until they pass away or something like that, or um, maybe even something like transferring your conscience into a uh, machine or something like that with a virtual world and just uh, never reaching out for contact because what you can actually create, and uh, at least you can create your own fantasy, be the god of the world, whatever you want, and uh, never have a desire to really explore after that because you're exploring internally. So that's just my take on it. But they give you quite a few scenarios here. And uh, take a chance, and if you can, uh, read these articles. Very interesting. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.